from the month of June. Now, bridge on Pangyongso by China. China is building a second bridge on Pangyongso Lake. This site is located near the location of border standoff between India and China. Now, the first bridge seemed to have been built to facilitate work on the new one. After completion, this second bridge will allow swift movement of armored vehicles between north and south banks of Pangyongso. The construction site is just east of an old ruin called Konark Fort where China has major frontier defense bases. China calls it Rutong country. Moving on to Pangyongso, Pangyongso is a 135 km long landlocked lake. India has around 45 km of the Pangyongso under its control while China has the rest. The site of the new bridge is near the halfway mark of the boomerang shaped lake. The site of the bridge is around 20 km east of Finger 8 on lake's north bank which is where line of actual control passes. Now although the bridge is being built in territory that is under China's control since 1958, the exact point is just west of India's claim line which means India considers it own territory. The Ministry of External Affairs last week stated that it considers the area as illegally occupied by China. Now the choice of location, the Indian Army during the recent standoff constructed, conducted an operation in this region. Indian troops outmaneuvered the People's Liberation Army to occupy the heights of Kailash Range in Chusul subsector on the south bank of Pangyongso. The position allowed India to dominate the strategically significant Sapangur Gap. Pungur Gap. The Pungur Gap could be used to launch offensive maneuvers as China had done in 1962. Also, India got a direct view of China's Moldo garrison. Now, this is the cause of immense concern for Chinese. The new bridge will allow Chinese troops to reduce travel time from around 12 hours to the moment to 4 hours. Now, this bridge helps in the faster movement of troops including mechanized forces, heavy weapons and military vehicles. The bridges are at one of the narrowest points on lake close to line of actual control. Now, looking at the map, Finger 8 lies at the exact point of LAC and uh, this would be the Kumak Fort which is the site of the new bridge and it is 20 kilometers west of Finger 8. Now, Chinese have come in 8 kilometers. And this would be the standoff site and this is the Pangyongso. So finger 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, 8. Now moving on. We have rail links between India and Bangladesh. Now India and Bangladesh are rebooting their rail links by launching several rail services. Now Bandhan Express, it was resumed after rebooting a long forgotten rail link between Kolkata and the industrial of hub of Khulna the third largest city of Bangladesh. Now in 1965, this route was severed by, served by Barisal Express, which was stopped due to India-Pakistan war. Now Maitri Express, it runs between Kolkata and Dhaka cantonment. Mitali Express, it will connect New Jalpaiguri in North Bengal with Dhaka. This train was announced by PM during his visit to Dhaka in March 2021. Now certain freight trains, Haldibari, Chilahati rail link in August 2021, India and Bangladesh inaugurated a rail link between Haldibari in India and Chilahati in Bangladesh. This rail link was part of the broad gauge main route from Kolkata to Siliguri. However, the war of 1965 acted, effectively cut off all railway links. Now, the other rail links which are operational between England and India and Bangladesh are Petra Pole, that is India and Bina Pole, which is in Bangladesh. Gede, Darshana, Gede is in India and Darshana is in Bangladesh. Singhabad, India and Rohanpur in Bangladesh and Radhikapur in India and Birol in Bangladesh. Moving on to mutual logistic agreement with Vietnam. The Ministry of Defense visited Vietnam. India signed the logistics agreement with Vietnam. Now, India and Vietnam signed a logistic agreement to allow the militaries of the two sites to use each other's bases for repair and replenishment of su supplies. This is the first such major agreement that Vietnam has signed with any country. India and Vietnam share a comprehensive strategic partnership since 2016. Defense cooperation is a key pillar of this partnership. Vietnam is also an important partner in India's Act East policy and India's Indo-Pacific vision.
not just india's indo pacific region about logistics agreement logistics agreement are administrative arrangements they facilitate access to military facilities for exchange of fuel and provision these agreements simplify logistic support and increase the operational turnaround of military when operating away from india india has signed several logistics agreement with quad nations france singapore south korea beginning with the logistics exchange memorandum of agreement with the us in 2016 that is lima moving on to outcomes of quad summit the second in person and fourth meeting of quad leadership happened recently regarding the outcomes of the summit regarding terrorism quad leaders denounced the use of terrorist proxies and emphasized the importance of denying logistics financial or military support to terrorist groups which could be used to launch a planned terror attacks including cross border attacks moving on to infrastructure funding the quad will seek to extend more than 50 billion dollars of infrastructure assistance and investment in the indo pacific over the five next five years now they launched the quad climate change adaptation and mitigation package which is called as qcham now qcham includes ongoing activities under the quad climate working group such as green shipping and ports clean energy cooperation in clean hydrogen methane emissions etc new cooperation in clean fuel ammonia and ccu which is carbon recycling cooperation and capacity building support to advance high integrity carbon markets under article 6 of the paris agreement etc now india pacific partnership for maritime domain awareness that is ipmda initiative it is designed to work with regional partners to respond to humanitarian and natural disasters and fight combat illegal fishing now quad partnership on humanitarian assistance and disaster relief that is hr hdr in the indo pacific it will further strengthen the collaboration to be to effectively respond to disasters in the region promote debt sustainability now china's belt and road initiative faces international scrutiny for irresponsible lending hence quad will strengthen the capacities of the countries in need to cope with the debt issue by promoting debt sustainability and transparency this is achieved through the quad debt management resource portal for cyber security the quad partners will initiate the first ever quad cyber security day to help individual internet users across the four nations the indo pacific region and beyond to better protect themselves from cyber threat that will be it